From James Cameron being the scariest man in Hollywood to Michael Bay ignoring his star's conditions on set, these are directors that no one wants to work with. Let's begin with the man that knows no bounds, James Cameron. There's no denying Cameron's movies are on a whole other level, but sources say that working with him is a huge pain in the butt. Lead actress Kate Winslet from Titanic might still be good friends with her co-stars like Leonardo DiCaprio, but she can't say the same about Cameron. In fact, she once said that she never wanted to work with him ever again, unless her paycheck had more zeros on it, which is probably why she was in Avatar 2. So why did she publicly declare that she'll never work with him after Titanic? Well, Cameron wasn't all that nice to her on set. For starters, he'd call her Kate weighs a lot, and at times made everyone spend over 20 hours shooting. Seems a little tyrannical. A day shooting with James could start at 5 a.m. and end at 1 a.m. Lunch would be served at 2 a.m. and breakfast at 4 p.m. Kate even developed pneumonia after spending so much time in the water. But guess who didn't seem to care? There's a reason why he was called the scariest man in Hollywood. And if you thought James was hard on his crew, wait until you hear about Stanley Kubrick and his demanding dictatorial style in The Shining. The auteur was a huge perfectionist, and his insistence on doing numerous takes even made actors cry on set. And Shelley Duvall's life was never going to be the same. She was supposed to be the typical damsel in distress and scream in every other scene. And Stanley's preferred method to get her in that mindset was to isolate her from the rest of the crew, belittle her, and traumatize her. Did you know the iconic baseball bat scene took 127 shots? True story, and a crazy one at that. I'm not gonna hurt you. Stay away from me! Stay away! Please! Stop swinging the bat. Stay away! Duvall's hands were shredded raw from gripping the weapon so tight. Her eyes would swell from excessive crying, and she'd go home severely dehydrated. Crying was like a daily routine for her, and sometimes she'd wake up dreading the day ahead because she knew it'd be full of forced tears. Even Duvall's co-star Jack Nicholson noticed how Stanley would be a different person around Shelley. He'd compliment Jack after a good scene, but wouldn't bat an eye at the woman who cried, screamed, and carried a six-year-old all day. Despite the trauma she endured, Shelley still defended Stanley, and the now-retired actress said that if he hadn't put her through that, the film wouldn't have been a success. This begs the question, is being ruthless behind the camera the secret to being a cinematic mastermind? Speaking of masterminds behind the camera, here's another director who has a different approach to getting avoided by everyone in Hollywood. Francis Ford Coppola's every production company's worst nightmare. This isn't news to anyone because he's been like this since he directed The Godfather. You said you'd come into my house on the day my daughter's to be married and you asked me to do murder. Money. He never really liked the source material the film was based on, barely read the first 50 pages, and declined the project altogether. It was only after Paramount reached out to him again a few months later that Francis decided to give it another shot, and slowly but surely, he started to appreciate the themes of the novel written by Mario Puzo, who by the way worked with Francis on the screenplay. But Francis had other issues during the production of his latest project, Megalopolis. Francis is bankrolling the entire film from his own pocket, and the budget is rumored to be in the $100 million range. Early reports coming from the set point to an unstable filming environment, but lead actor Adam Driver debunked those claims and calls his time working with Francis one of the best shooting experiences of his career. But I can't help but wonder if this is actually true, or if it's his paycheck talking. In any case, speaking of money, Coppola had an issue with budgeting because the budget went up to $120 million after experimenting with visual set technology. Production issues are the norm when it comes to his work. However, the final product is usually worth the trouble because his films are beyond extraordinary. Well, you recently arrived from abroad and I, I do not know your city. It's a beautiful lady. From you may purchase a street atlas for sixpence. Good day. I only wish I could say the same for Ridley Scott who's had some hits and misses throughout his career. I wouldn't say he's a perfectionist per se, but one thing has stuck with him since his 1982 cult classic Blade Runner. The futuristic sci-fi adventure starred Harrison Ford and Sean Young, 
who were both involved in the drama that went on behind the scenes of the film. In one of her more recent interviews, Young revealed some interesting facts about the director. And these aren't the types of things one would want on their resume. It turns out Scott was persistent in his attempts to date her, and she declined his advances multiple times. In the end, Scott ended up dating Joanna Cassidy, who played Zora in the film. And initially, Sean felt relieved. But when she was asked to do a rather aggressive, intimate scene with her co-star that some fans called a moment of hate rather than love, Young felt it was Scott's way of getting even with her after rejecting him. If her claims are true, they're certainly disturbing. Young also added that the Alien director never hired her for another movie ever since. And to make matters worse, she was subsequently blackballed from Hollywood. But Blade Runner wasn't the only film where Ridley faced issues. In 2014's Exodus Gods and Kings, a film set in ancient Egypt with a cast full of white actors, people complained about how prevalent the whitewashing was in the film. And since we're on the topic of world-renowned filmmakers, let's sprinkle in Quentin Tarantino and his insufferable work ethic. Look, I know he's one of the most successful directors ever, but he's been accused of negligence and bullying by Pulp Fiction star Uma Thurman, allegedly spitting in her face and choking her with chains. There were also voice clips of him defending Roman Polanski. Tarantino said that Polanski's victim was down for it. And strong words like that often enable predators to fetishize women. So I'd imagine for some, it could be exhausting working with a director like Quentin. There was a clip of the filmmaker redoing a scene in Inglorious Bastards, where he asked the cast and crew why they're doing another take in an almost cult-like way. And he makes them say, because we love making movies. And action! Cool, let's do it one more time. Why? Because we love making movies! Now, let's go out with a bang and talk about Michael Bay. Hollywood's most explosive director. Bay's blockbusters are always entertaining to watch, but some of the stuff that goes on behind the camera makes people wonder if it's even worth it. Much of the controversy revolves around the Transformers movies, and Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox couldn't seem to let Bay's tactics slide. The filmmaker was accused of verbally abusing Fox and overly sexualizing her in his movies, even when she was a minor back when they were shooting Bad Boys 2. LaBeouf was injured because of a stunt in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, but the director continued to put him through harsh scenes and even added a wrist injury to the script so the actor could keep his cast on. Fox publicly accused Bay of being a tyrant, and they both took some very public shots at one another on various social media platforms. I don't think they'll be working together again anytime soon. So, from Michael Bay ignoring his star's conditions on set, to James Cameron being the scariest man in Hollywood, those were directors that no one wants to work with.